How to learn English like a baby? So, there is a huge problem out there. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of confused English students and confused English learners. Perhaps you are one. These students know a lot of English. They know a lot of grammar rules. They, but the problem is that they cannot understand instantly and effortlessly. They cannot understand and speak clearly, confidently. They know about English, linguistics, the academic study of um, nouns, verbs, pronouns, phrases, and the clauses and different verb tenses, all that stuff, but they cannot perform. They cannot understand instantly and effortlessly, cannot speak clearly, confidently. That's a huge problem, guys. All these adult students out there who just cannot actually speak English well and understand it well, even though they have known a lot. So, um, most schools, most programs, indeed, most students in those schools are focused on academic English. See, academic English is the English that is uh, used in schools, in colleges and universities at the highest level. It's academic English. So what are they focusing on? They are focusing on grammar rules. In other words, they are focusing on linguistics and they are focused on writing. If you think about it, in your English classes, probably in the past, right? you probably um, did a lot of writing. You were reading lots of textbooks and you were writing for your text. You're writing, 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 lots of writing. Not just a normal writing, not writing a letter to someone else, not writing an email to another one, but actually writing papers, writing essays, things like that. In academic English, you know, like, getting ready for the IELTS and TOEFL examinations. So that's the academic level English. That's very difficult kind of English, actually. That's a basically a, um, the formal written style of English. It's not even just a formal, I can say, uh, it's also very specific to schools. So academic English, the English you've learned most of your life, probably, is a very small section of normal English. It's, it's a special kind of English that is very formal and is based on writing and used only in schools and trying to learn that first, like focusing on that first. I mean, it, it's look like you, you're trying to run a marathon, like. 30 car, 50 car, or before you can crawl, before you can crawl like a baby. It's kind of a backwards. In other words, uh, in schools, like in textbook, in most English programs, I think that the order is wrong. So what I offering you, just see the babies, because babies know better. Babies know best. How do babies learn English? So let's think about this. What do they do first? Let's talk about this, the steps. What are the steps? What is the schedule that a baby follow? Well, the first baby focuses totally on listening, naturally, right? When they are first born, they cannot speak, they cannot read, they cannot write, but they listen for at least a year and they, they are only listening. They are not speaking at all. They might make some sounds like ba 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 da da da, but they are not speaking words. They are not speaking English, for example, if they are American baby. So, what are they doing? They are totally focused on listening, massive listening, every day, consistently and constantly. 
They are listening, 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 listening to their parents. If they have a brothers and sisters, they are listening to them. Listening, 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 and a lot of listening. So much listening constantly, all day, every day. Massive listening is the very first thing they do. They focus totally on, on that in the beginning, for at least a year, I said. But of course, that massive amount of listening continues their whole life. Now, after a lot of listening, what is the second thing they do? Do they start reading and writing? No, they don't. The second thing they focus on or practice is speaking. Of course, they continue listening a lot. They are still listening every single day, but then after a year or more or less, I don't know, like they start speaking. But how do they practice speaking? Well, the most important point here is that it's unforced. <laughs> they don't force themselves to speak. They don't try to speak full sentences. They, they start just by speaking one word um, and then another word and eventually they will start speaking two words together, right? And then uh, little phrases of three or four words and then finally after many words they will start to speak in a full sentences so first the very first step the babies focus on listening that's all they do then they add speaking but they are still doing a lot of listening so what is the next step now well the next step is reading but how do babies start learning to read well they start learning to read when their parents read to them right they have a some simple maybe storybooks and one of their parents will sit with the child and uh, read a book to them so in other words the child is ready to um, uh, is ready um, still listening the child is looking at the book, looking at the words, but listening to their parents. So they start learning to read with listening. Interesting, yes? And after some time of doing this, they will begin to recognize some of the words and the sounds. Their parents will also teach them A, B, C, D, teach them the different um, the letters and some of those sounds as well. Again, how are they doing this? Through listening, right? They learn the sounds of the letters and then they learn a lot of words by listening to their parents while they are reading it. And finally, they will move on to reading themselves without the parents but they will do a lot of deep learning with this. What does that mean? Okay, so it means that children will read the same book again and again and again. Probably if you know a, a small children, uh, you know that they, they love to read their favorite books. You know, they, they will read some same book, you know, 100 times, 200 times, 300 times or more. The parents think, oh my God, you know, I cannot believe that they want to listen to the same book again, to read the same book again, but they love it and they will do it. So they are getting a lot of repetition, a lot of deep learning with their reading. So only after, oh no, only at the final step, we can say, will they read silently to themselves. That's the last step of the learning to read for a small child. And of course, what do children read when they are young? Are they reading textbooks? No, of course, uh, they are reading stories, just the stories, stories, stories about magic, stories about wizard, um, stories about princesses and all these kind of things. <sighs> these great, interesting, magical stories that are very interesting to them. 
then they will continue reading those and of course uh, the storybooks will get more difficult more difficult more difficult but um, they are still focused a lot on reading stories only at the end finally the last step is writing only after they can read at least um, like some will they start to learn to write but again in the beginning they really are learning the physical part of writing of course for a young child just uh, to make a letters to draw the letters can be difficult so um, for the first several years they are just uh, practicing making letters and writing individual words as an adult you don't need to do this of course you can already do that it's just that not necessary but the the point is that the true writing the real writing writing the full sentences writing ideas that kind of things that happens much 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 later that kind of writing real writing only starts after the child has totally mastered listening totally mastered speaking and it's very very good at reading only then will they begin to write and it's very simple for a long time so the academic style of writing you know writing essays uh, reports that only begins much much later and the learning uh, reading grammar rules that that's only in the high schools that's at the age of 15 16 even then most uh, students forget it most most native speakers even. so um, what does this mean for you right now well, right now, you wanted to speak English clearly, as I said, and confidently, and automatically as well. So, you wanted to understand spoken English instantly and effortlessly. That means you need to look at how the babies do it. See, uh, the, the, the problem is uh, in schools, you focus too much on writing. You focus um, too much on difficult academic readings and you, you, you learn this uh, strange kind of English called the academic English. Um, and I think that um, this type of English is, is useful in schools. It's, it, it's not useful in business, it's not useful uh, with friends, it's not useful with travel, it's not useful for phone calls, emails, nothing else in the rest of the world. Um, no other parts of the world use academic English, only schools. So, what are you gonna do? Like, so you need to to go back and again be a baby again, right? So, time to be a little baby again. You need to you, you need to do what? Like, do what the babies did, and that means number one, focus on listening. Maybe this is your um, decision, but maybe you might spend one full entire year totally focused on listening massive listening just listening and listening and listening to english uh, every single day one an hour two hours three hours better that's all no worry about speaking no worry about reading and writing just just you know um try to do listening you could do that you might decide to focus on listening and still continue speaking also that's okay but the main point is you need to go back and do each of the step in the correct order so you need to first master listening and even if you are still speaking and you are still reading some that's okay but your first focus should be on listening and you should be totally master it you should be able to understand English instantly and automatically and only then should you worry about speaking better. The truth is, as you are listening and your listening actually really becomes great, your speaking will begin to improve. Totally, automatically and effortlessly. You could decide to practice a little bit, little bit of speaking for presentations, just so 
you sound more confident, but the main thing you should do is totally focus on listening. I know I'm just repeating the word listening so much. I just wanted to remind it to you once more. And after you have mastered listening and you speak quite easily, then you could focus on reading. And you could be reading, reading, reading lots of novels, lots of storybooks. And you can even do that at, 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 at the same time. You could do that with listening. So you could read a book and listen to the audiobook at the same time. For example, you know, um, lots and lots and, and lots of reading and listening are just coming out with the reading, with the transcript of it. So uh, only then you should you should worry about your writing now. The good news is that when you master listening and speaking and reading writing becomes so much easier. You don't need to think about grammar rules anymore. You can just write more naturally. So, finally, my message to you is this. Learn like a baby. Focus a lot, a lot, a lot on listening. That's the most. Focus mostly on listening again. With speaking, don't force yourself to speak. It's okay to answer with just the two words or little phrases. You don't have to use full sentences all the time. Just speak spontaneously. Let it come out and um, if you make mistakes, that's okay. Children do not worry about mistakes when they speak. Just speak naturally. Then, third, read, read, read lots of storybooks, interesting, fun storybooks. And the last point is writing is the last thing to do. So you can save it for the later. Okay, that's all. See you next time. Bye.